Right. If you're going to take it to him tomorrow, if I was you, I'd go ahead and take it off now. Right. And just put it in my pocket, and that way I'll be like, look, I ain't got this ideology stuff on my neck. Right. You see what I'm saying? I ain't got to, you know, I want to be right with the most high. was not called America back in 520 something BC, right? This place didn't have a name. It was called Osiris, right? South America, right? Didn't have the name South America. Where you get South and then put America on it? Whose name is that? America Vespucci, really? North America. America Vespucci, right? Africa. Come from a white man, Leo Scipio Apicone, cause he conquered Hannibal in the Second Punic War. That's where that name come from. Africa, Africa was called Mizraim and Canaan. You see how they go and they change things to make you think that, oh, that's the name of that, that land, or uh, Christ came out of the Middle East. Right. Middle East is something that was made up by another white man. Right. right? What am I showing you? Who you are according to the Bible. Right. Now what must I do? I see you have a uh, unk on your neck, right? What does that mean? You know what that means? Tell me. Huh? Tell me. Tell you? Yeah. You want me to tell you? Yes, sir. Get that from the idol. I want to for sure understand. You want to show for sure understand? It's a symbol. It's a sex symbol, really. That's exactly what it is. The T. It's after Tammuz. You know what Tammuz was? Right? Tammuz was the time of when the Africans were ruling, right? Right? So, right what am I showing you? That that's idolatry, right? And you got a pharaoh on your neck as well, right? We're, we're gods, right? If we're gods, then when if you got a picture of pharaoh, right? Say, I was to die, and people made an image of me and put it on their neck. What? Well, that's idolatry. They're idolizing me. You see what I'm saying? We're not supposed to have idols in our, in our life, right? Well, I'm going to read it for you. Read. The book of Habakkuk, chapter 2 and verse 18. What profited the graven image? That's a graven image that Ankh and Pharaoh. I don't know what the other thing is, but I think it's just a, just a letter, right? Right. You're going to come out better with just that, right? <laughs> read. The, the maker thereof have graven it. The molten image and a teacher of lies. So it's a molten image and it teaches you lies. It teaches you opposite of what the Bible says, right? So what am I dealing with you on? Images and idolatry, right? When you deal with images and idolatry, that becomes your God, right? Your God is the God of the Bible. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? Christ, who came in the wealth on his way, earth, and, and died for you, right? So wearing that idol isn't going to it's not going to get you anywhere. It's that stuff, but it was a filthy rag, right? Right? A graven image, or idol, like you see, they have Sebo on their neck, we call it. Caesar, Caesar Bozier, yeah, Christ's image, right? That's nothing. Those idols don't, don't do anything for you. You're idolizing a, a dead man, right? Or you're idolizing something that is contrary to the Bible, right? What we're showing you, Isaiah 30 and 22, what images are and what they mean to God, right? They don't mean anything to God, right? Read. The book of Isaiah, chapter 30 and verse 22. Ye shall defile also the covering of thy graven image of silver. So you see the, the bar, 
the, the the image of silver, right? You got silver one and you got a gold one on, right? Read. And the ornament of thy molten image of gold. So the ornament of your molten image of gold. That's what you have on your neck. Read. Thou shalt cast them away as a mistress cloth. So it's like a woman wearing a woman's dirty pad around your neck. That, that's what it compares to, right? Right? We do it because we think it's bling, it looks good, so on and so forth. Ain't nothing wrong with the necklace. It's the image that's on the necklace. That's what you don't need. I mean, you throw it away, melt it down, make it into something else, but you, you shouldn't have that on your neck. So it's a, it's, it detests the most high that much that he put it as, it says, so as what? As a mistress? As a mistress cloth. That's a bloody nasty tampon around your neck. Red around your neck. That's what it compares to. Right? Go to verse 1. Isaiah chapter 30 and verse 1. Woe to the rebellious children. Woe to the rebellious children. He's talking about us. Read. Said the Lord that take counsel, but not of me. Well, we don't take the counsel of the Lord saying, oh, you know, oh, hey, man, this is mine. I paid, man, I paid $600 for this. We don't take in mind the counsel that we get, the, the Bible says, right? Read. And that cover with covering, but not of my spirit. But not of his spirit. That it's telling you that is not of the most high. Right? That didn't come from us. That's another nation. The pharaohs were not us. Right. We were kings and priests, not pharaohs, right? They're the one that enslaved us. That's what he said when we came out of Egypt. When we came out of Egypt, what's coming from them? Right? That's why he said, come out from among them and choose none of their ways, right? So that's the way of the other nations, right? Right? Go on to verse 2. Verse 2. They want to go down into Egypt. See, that came from Egypt. Pharaoh was in Egypt. Read. And had not asked at my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh. In the strength of Pharaoh. So those images, that's where that came from, right? It didn't come from us. Read. And to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Trusting, that's trusting in the shadow of Egypt. The uh, um, and the Pharaoh, that's Egypt. That's not us, right? And now, if you if I, um, if you looked at us, we wore chains, we had earrings, we had bracelets, right? But you don't hear where it was any image on, right? If it was the image on, it might have been a lion. It might have been uh, a menorah right. or something like that. A balance, a scale and balance, that, those are our images. Those images right there, bro, is of the world. And you truly love the most high, you would get rid of that stuff, right? Take it to the, uh, to the people tomorrow. Right. If you don't take it to them tomorrow, if I was you, I'd go ahead and take it off now. Word. And just put it in my pocket, and that way I'll be like, look, I ain't got this ideology stuff on my neck. Right. You see what I'm saying? I ain't got to, you know, I want to be right with the most high, right? You, 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 I see an intelligent uh, brother before me, right? I'm going to show you something that the order of God. Get the order of God, right? How God operates in our lives, right? How, we order, how God operates, right? Order. We are people of order, right? Most, most men, people think that women are great organizers. If they're great organizers, who did God create first? God created who first? Man, right? He created the man first. So wasn't the organization already in process? No. See, he had to teach the woman. So you hear men and people say the women are great organized. Yes, they are. But where did they learn that from? No. They learned it from us. Right? Read this. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11 and verse 3. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. The head of every man, you, me, and these men out here is Christ. Read. And the head of the woman is the man. The head of the woman is the man. Woman, black woman, Hispanic, Native American woman. They can't stand to hear that, right? But they don't understand the order. Read on. And the head of Christ is God. So if the head of Christ is God, then who's under Christ? The man, right? So who's under the man? The woman, right? Then the children, right? Read on. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, Dishonor it, his head. So, when you're praying a prophecy, you hear the word of God coming out, and your head is covered, it's going to uncover. See what I'm saying? So, you have your head covered. I know it's a little chilly out here. All of us, we don't have hats on. 
But when the word of God has been spoken, you have to take your hat off. Right? <laughs> right? Understand. You got to understand the similar, the similar um, rhythm behind it. When you go into the courthouse, what's the first thing they ask you to do? They got to take it off, right? But brothers get so bent over that thing, right? It's nothing to degrade you. It's to help you. Like, oh, the Bible's coming out. I hear hey, somebody's talking the Bible. Now I'm in the earshot of that. I take my hat off. Right? Do we wear hats? Yeah, we wear hats. We support our stuff just like you do. Right? But when the word of God is coming out, or you hear the word of God, you got to remove that head cover. Right? Right, right. Right? And don't, you know, we don't go and sneak and try to put it back on or whatever, right? Uh, see, see what I'm saying? What am I showing you? The Bible is, everything we're supposed to do is in the Bible. The right. preachers don't teach you that. Right. That's, what, that's what, why we have to come out here in the highways and the hedges and tell our people. Because in the church, all they're going to do is give you old shuffle dance and get you to hucking and bucking. And then going to ask you to pay him. Oh, yeah. Pass the plate again. We need to take up a collection for the, the ushers now. Love what? Offering. A love offering. Right? That's what we're trying to show our people. It's good that you're standing here and, and you're taking us in, right? And all you got to do is fly. Now you know what's, what you need to do and how to do it, right? Some of the stuff you need to do and how to do it. You see these brothers around here? They got the, at the bottom of their shirt. You know what those are? You, want, you, you don't know what they are? All right, we're going to tell you. Right. That's a certain thing. When you start learning, it's like you know you don't really know about taking the hat off, right? But you know that you go in the courthouse and take it off. They got that from us. It came from us. Everything they do, they pretty, pretty much learn from us. Right. They just took it and flipped it on us, right? Read that. The book of Numbers, chapter 15 and verse 38. Yeah. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments. Says, speak to us and tell us to make fringes in the border. Get that for me? Then tell us to make borders in the in our, uh, our garment, right? Read on. Speak, speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garment. So they have fringes in the border of their garment. See the Native Americans down there? This car and all them, they got fringes in the border of their garments down here. Right? Read. Throughout their generation. It says throughout the generation. Are we still generating? Are we still generating people? People still coming on earth? Our people? Right? It says throughout. That's mean don't stop. It doesn't stop. Oh, that was back when Moses was on earth. Well, you're still on earth. You're still generating. Your you're first, second, and third generation, some of them still living, right? So it said throughout your generations. Read. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. He said, I'll put on the fringe, and on the fringe, you put at the bottom of it a ribbon of blue, right? See that blue thread right there? That's what you put on the fringe. That's how you identify who you are. So what? when you get ready to sin, I'm going to read it for you. Read. And it shall be for a fringe that ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord. So you look upon this and say, say you see the big booty Judy passing by, right? And you like, I, 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 you look down at your face and I, I can't be lusting at my sister. You see what I'm saying? No, you're going to see it. Sometimes you ain't got no choice but to see it. But but you remember by having knees on, right? You'll, you'll see a lot of brothers, they'll be standing around doing this, right. rubbing their friends, right? But they're remembering something. They're not just doing it because, you know, they on there. It's keeping them out of trouble. See what I'm saying? Read. That ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord. You look upon it to remember this book and the commandments and the statutes in it, right? That's why you do that, right? He had to give it that because we was coming out of Egypt. We was living it. We was in the midst of sin for 420 something years, right? Read. And... Do them and do them. You can't just have them on and strut around and still you're still chasing big booty Judy. You're still fornicating. You're yeah. still smoking. You're still doing uh, being a drunkard. You can't do that, right? Is that it? And that ye seek not after your own hearts. Don't so you seek after your own minds? And oh yeah, you know, just like with the ump, you didn't know. With the pharaoh, you didn't know, but now you know, right? Read. And your own eyes, after which ye used to go a whoring. Uh, after you used to go a whoring, that you used to be in the midst of whoredom, all kind of uh, 
nasty stuff, right? That's why you wear these, right? When you pull them up, when you say you got this on, you throw to pull your shirt up, that's the first thing you're going to feel. And at the end, they're going to rub across your head, right? And then if you go beyond that point, that's, that's between you and the most high after that, right? That's why you see the brothers with the fringes on, right? In the order, right? You don't see none of these brothers trying to interrupt me, cut me off. Oh, I got something to say. No. Why? Because the order I showed you earlier, earlier that goes throughout, right? Not just Hello. in that book, right? It says, seek we, why? I was saying to seek the other book and read, right? Because we don't read. We let the pastor on Sunday go in the church, pastor read the Bible to him. Sunday's over. Close the Bible and don't even pick the book up no more until the next time. But well, how you going to get the knowledge? The Bible says you seek ye out of the book and read. These brothers here and myself, we read. Right? Some of us read two, three, four hours a day. Read. Read. The book of Isaiah, chapter 34 and verse 16. Seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord. The book of the Lord, as we know it, is the Bible. And read, right? No one of these shall fail. Nothing in this Bible is going to fail. None of the prophecies, none of anything that's been brought forth will ever fail. Right? In the last book of the Bible, it tells you to read the Bible. In the last book of the Bible, it tells you to keep the commandment. So how is the commandment, the law is done away with? That's a lot. Read. The book of Revelation, chapter 22 and verse 14. Help. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter and through the gates into the city. Now read this. The book of Revelations, chapter 1 and verse 3. Right. Blessed is he that read it. He said, blessed is he that read it, right? Remember that old class they had? I know when I was growing up, with that, it was a class they taught and said, reading is fundamental. For our whole hour, that's all you did was read. They took that out of the school, right? He said, blessed is he that what? That read it. He said, bless uh, you read the Bible. Why? Because that's where you get your wisdom, knowledge, and understanding is from reading the Bible, right? What am I showing you? Who you are according to the Bible? Now I'm going to show you what's required of you. What's required of you, right? As an Israelite, and see, you got the full beard. You got the beard. Good. Keep that. Don't cut that off. Don't ever let nobody talk to you into cutting it off. Right? Because that's a badge of manly dignity. Like I was telling the brothers earlier, only two people don't have hair on their face. Women and children. That's why when they brought us over here on them slave ship, they stripped your face, right? And called you boy. No, because they knew they was insulting. Because they didn't just cut everything off of them. Other body parts too. They mutilated us. And we supposed to be hand in hand hooked up with these people. Oh, God loves them too. That's a lie. Right? Read that. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 10 and verse 12. And thou, Israel, what do the Lord thy God require of thee? He's saying what God requires of you, Tony, right? But to fear the Lord thy God. The fear of God is to love him. The fear, that's the not beginning of knowledge. It's the love of God, right? To walk in all his ways. Walk in all the ways. People say, oh, you can't keep all the commandments. Yes, you can. You just got to You just gotta do it. Uh, that means I won't have no sin. You all going right. Right, right. That's how it's supposed to be. As less sin as you have, the better you're going to be. Read. And to love him and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. To keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. So, Keep the commandment. That's what's required of us. That's what it's, that whole thing we read is keeping a commandment. What is a nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you. It's Nation Time.
is one, is one.